members each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes a gentleman from Virginia. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. This is a civil liberty amendment. It's clarifying and strengthening the existing federal law. Now, the amendment is necessary, unfortunately, because while the underlying law protects a traveler who is transporting a firearm under the federal regulations that have to be locked and out of the reach of the person if they're in a car, in a proper container, et cetera, traveling from state A to state B, sometimes on the way from state A where the gun is lawful to state C where the gun is lawful, one must pass through state B where the gun may or may not be lawful. Uh, what we have found is that notwithstanding the fact that it's lawful in A and lawful in C and protected by federal law while being transported, some state and local governments have decided that uh, they're not going to follow the federal law and they end up arresting the otherwise law-abiding traveler. Now, we have examples of this, and it's not just that they're out necessarily looking for the traveler, but there are circumstances that occur. Uh, one example uh, that happens uh, fairly frequently is a airline passenger has done everything they're supposed to do. They followed all the rules. They followed the, the uh, security rules. And for reasons beyond their control, their flight in State B is missed. So they've traveled lawfully. They've checked their gun lawfully. They've done everything they're supposed to do. But when they get to the, the layover terminal, their flight has either already gone or it's been canceled. And in one case in particular, the gentleman was, in, was told, you need to go to a hotel, take your bags, come back to the next morning. When he came back the next morning, he was arrested by uh, state law enforcement individuals because his gun was not legal, notwithstanding the fact he'd done everything he was supposed to. In another very tragic situation, a gentleman was traveling from New Jersey to South Carolina. He was a veteran. He stopped off in Washington, D.C. at Walter Reed to see one of his doctors. He is lawfully transporting it under federal law. He's arrested. Now, while most of these cases uh, end up getting worked out either as a misdemeanor or they work out some other arrangement, it is still a great impediment on the traveler to use their, the, law, the federal law lawfully. So what this amendment does is it says if that happens, if they're stopped in a, by a state or local government, that the prosecutor in that state or local area must prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt that this individual was not following the federal law. Sounds like a pretty reasonable American uh, principle. And if it is determined that the traveler was lawful and they were actually arrested and they have to go to court to defend themselves, the court will award attorney's fees to that individual. We're just trying to make them whole. We're not paying them for the time they served in jail. We're not paying them for the fact that their vacation plans or their travel plans were disrupted. We're just saying that there ought to be some thing that tells the local and state government, y'all not do this again, you're going to pay this gentleman or this gentle lady her attorney's fees. Now, to me, that's taking care of civil liberties and making sure that people who are following the law are not wrongfully arrested without any recourse. So I see this as a civil liberties amendment. With that, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, yield such time as he may need to Mr. Whitman and then reserve the remainder of my time. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Virginia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank the gentleman from Virginia, and I urge my colleagues to support this amendment and yield back. The gentleman from Virginia reserve. I reserve.